I go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live. I've done one of those great things that so many other people do. Start talking with them out without the mic access, excuse me. I want to get off to a really good start today and thank you, everyone on behalf of myself, Kim and Peggy, for being with us on our Milestone show. We're at number 100 show, and it wouldn't be possible without the folks in the classroom, new and um, seasoned. That's what I want to say. Some of you have been with us for um, the beginning of the show, especially Tammy Moore in the chat room who does our closed captioning. She's faithful with us, and I know she's a regular and, and is just as much a part of our 100th show. So thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. Our show today is about connected principles, and our special guests today are George Kuros and Patrick Larkin. George is going to do most of the talking, and uh, Patrick's in the chat room room and he's going to be typing furiously. It's um, just the beginning of his uh, journey into Illuminate and he doesn't have a headset today so we're going to be uh, watching very, um, can't think of, hey my work, mine's not working. We're going to be watching for Patrick typing away furiously because I know he's going to be pulling George's legs as we go through this show today but both of them have a great sense of humor. Um, I want to um, start off the show by asking who in the room is new and if you could just click on that little hand and I'll know who I need to help navigate. So we do have a couple of new people here. Great, thank you very much. So I'm going to take a brief moment to walk you through how to participate. I think one of you figured out how to send the message. So under the participants window there is a blank field here. If you type in your message and click send, you'll be able to participate in the chat. Make sure that the drop-down menu says this room because if it goes uh, to the moderators, only moderators see that um, message. So if it turns out blue in the um, chat window, you meet, you're talking to the moderators and not to the rest of the room. Some of you figured out how to raise your hands at the end of the show. We will have the opportunity for uh, open mic time, and that's what you'll use the hand with the green arrow if you click on that. Some of you just saw that, the number appearing beside your name, and they will recognize you and give you mic access. But we do ask you to have a USB headset on to solve feedback. If you don't have the headset, please just type your questions in the chat, and uh, we'll either we'll answer it or George or Patrick will respond. Um, leaving the session is not that little blue door there. That simply means that you're away from your computer when you're closing out, leaving the show, close out your browser, and uh, that's the end of it. Uh, we will be asking you some poll questions in a minute. So we have a green check here and a red X that we use to click on those icons to cast your votes. Uh, this is a little part here about going to the microphone. Once you do have microphone privileges, bottom left hand corner, something I forgot a few minutes ago, you need to click on it and it'll turn yellow and then it is active. Uh, lots of fun in a few minutes when I ask you some poll questions, but I am going to also ask you to show where you're located on the world map. And you need to know where this little tool in here, it's the laser pointer and it's got a blue wand with a red starburst. We'll be giving you uh, whiteboard privileges and we'll ask you to click on that and click on the map in a second. Something else we'd like to recommend to you for the show is that if the chat window is not appearing in the middle of your screen right now, we suggest that you do change it instead of being at the bottom of the participants window, which you saw right here. If you go to the menu bar to view layouts and wide layout, it'll move this chat window over so it's a little bit easier to watch it go through the show. So that's one tip we'd like to pass on to you. So. One really key point we want to bring to your attention for the new people here is this program is recorded. We do have a website, live.classroom20.com, and we post the recordings to our session along with the links to all the uh, websites and information that's being mentioned throughout the show so that you'll be able to come back and re review it yourself. There's a full Illuminate session, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. Uh, there's be an MP3 audio file and an MP4 file, which you'll be able to download from our iTunes U channel onto your iPod. So it's a great place to go if you, um, you want to review it or somebody you really want them to see the show, please send them to our website again to uh, enjoy the presentation. So now the fun. We need the laser pointer on the left-hand side of your whiteboard, blue wand with the red starburst. Click on that and show us where you are in the world because it's really fun to see uh, we have people in Europe, Australia, Canada, 
that would be George in Alberta. If you had a BC, someone else in Northern Ontario, Quebec, PEI, you know, down in New Brunswick, PEI. And if you can't work that laser pointer, then just type in the chat room where you're from. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada, and I know Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and Kim is in San Antonio, Texas. So it is great to see everyone here spread across the world, which makes us even more excited when we're celebrating our 100th show to know that we have people who have participated from all points and sites in the world. So thank you very much. We're going to move on to our poll question. So this again is the red check and the green X at the bottom of the participants window. And our first question is, are you a building principal, school leader, or district administrator? So it's a green check if you are, and a red X if you're not. So it's at the bottom of the participants window, the green check, or the red X to cast your votes. Just about everyone's had a chance to vote, so let's look at the results so that uh, George and Patrick will have an idea who the audience is today. So 30% are uh, a building principal, school leader, or district administrator. 53% of us are not. So you'll have some learning to do, and I hope that you'll be able to pass this information on to your principal if you are not one yourself. I'm going to clear the votes, and we're going to go to the next poll question, which is, are the leaders in your school district district using social media to connect? Green check if you they are green X if they're not. So if you yourself or the leaders in your school district are using social media, please let us know with a green check and a red X. I think visibly I can see the results. It looks like there are a lot of people who are not. So I'm just gonna show you the votes here and I am right over fifty percent are not using social media to connect with each other or their, their communities, and 30% um, are. So thank you. Let's clear the votes again and move to our last poll question, and that is, do your district filters, do your district filter block social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook? I'm going to give you a minute to vote. Do your district's filter or block social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook? Let's take a look at the results. Just under 60% are having that experience and frustration of having these tools blocked, and about 18% are not. And a few of us haven't had a chance to find out where the green check and the red X is. So I think it is kind of fun to do the poll questions to get a, a sense of where our um, levels of understanding are. So thanks again. And we're going to move on to the beginning of our show. Thank you very much for being with me to start off the show. Our topic, again, is Connected Principles. And our special guests are George Kouros and Patrick Larkin. And their website is connectedprinciples.com. It gives me a lot of pressure because I've had a chance to talk to, to George on several other occasions. And George is currently the school principal of Forest Green School and Connections for Learning in Stony Plain, Alberta, Canada. And the schools are from uh, ages K to 12, and he loves working with kids. And I know that's just going to shine out in a minute. He's passionate about distributed leadership at the school. And he believes that creating a collaborative environment with all stakeholders will help to ensure that educators make the best needs for all children. And I know he's doing a phenomenal job with his parents and with school improvement planning because that's where we've connected before. And um, he has a great sense of humor, which he gets from his brother. And I know that'll come up a lot in the conversation. So, uh, Patrick, we haven't actually met face-to-face uh, -face or online, but he. Uh, is well known in the community with the Connected Principal. He's the principal of Burlington High School in Massachusetts. And he's just completed his 13th year as a high school administrator and six as a building principal. And prior to that, he's a, a school administrator and a high school English teacher. And as assistant principal, Patrick was named the assistant principal of the year in the state of Massachusetts. He's also a former executive board member in Massachusetts Secondary School Administrators Association. And he recently completed a two-year term as a member of the New England 
Association of Schools and Colleges Commissions on Public Secondary School. He's an avid blogger. He's actually one of the first blogging principals that I came upon, and so I know he set the bar for a lot of uh, administrators, not only in the United States, Massachusetts, but across the world. So thank you much, very much, both Patrick and George, for being with us today. And again, George uh, will be doing the talking. Patrick's going to be typing away madly. And we're going to ask them to start the presentation with uh, an answer to our newbie question, which is, what is Connected Principles? So this is the opportunity now for me to turn the mic over to George and start the presentation again. Thank you both for being with us today. Yeah, I'd like to welcome everybody today. Thank you for so many people coming. Um, we're really excited to kind of talk about what we're doing and um, some of the things that are happening with Connected Principles. But I know that um, I, I always get the feeling that not many um, administrators are going to be in the session. So we really try to make sure that we hit all educators, that this just isn't admin, but this is, um, this is uh, you know, for everyone in education. And we really want to show you how we kind of can start a movement and, and connect with each other. But um, this can be done for anybody in education. And hopefully what we do is we start uh, putting this down to our students and that they start building these connections and connecting with people that are passionate. So can you just give me a smiley face if you can hear me properly and if my mic's okay? I'm assuming it's okay because no one stopped me yet. <laughs> Excuse me. I guarantee you at some point in this session that my dog will bark furiously. Uh, I apologize in advance, but it will happen at something, just so that you know. Um, so, so Connected Principles, what it basically is, is just a website that um, it's a collaborative blog and it's through administrators that are um, mostly in North America, although we're open to anybody. And um, it's a way that we can kind of share ideas and connect and, um, and really share with each other what our passions are. So hopefully with this question, I'm going to get more into it um, throughout and we'll be clear. Now I'm going to just move the, uh, my Illuminate board over so I can't see the chat because I'm so easily distracted. I know um, we have, I think my teachers, they, they deal, they, uh, they don't really worry so much about uh, if a kid is diagnosed with AD, ADD because they, they think their principal has it. So I'm kind of all over the place, so I have to have as little distraction as possible. So um, I'm just going to kind of go over what we're doing today. And um, we actually, we just kind of, we Connected Principal is, um, it's something that is evolving continuously and, and joining. We only started it in, um, in uh, about August 2010. And really the, the fundamentals of it is that we share what we do, we're learning, and we're leading. So we're, we just thought those three words would be beneficial to kind of saying what we do. And if you haven't been to the site, it is at connectedprinciples.com. And you can check it out. And so it's kind of this collaborative blog that people share. And, and um, have this information all over. Now, if you are on Twitter or on Google Docs, or if you have access to, like obviously I'll be on a website, um, you can use the hashtag CPChat um, to, to tweet out anything that you're learning or any questions that you have. And myself and Patrick and the other connected principals that are probably in the room right now, like I know Dave Bircher is here, David Truss is here. They'll also be able to answer any of those questions or look at that. Now, all of the resources that I'm sharing are on a Google Doc, and you can find it at that location, uh, bit.ly slash conprint20 or 2o. And basically, so when we discuss any articles that we're um, sharing today, you can read them or see them at that time or have access for them after. And it's kind of just so that it's like, um, it's, it's together with this. So if you share this with your principal after the session, they can have this resource after. And we really want to use the, um, it, the Illuminate session for, or the Illuminate chat room if you have any questions, but also you can use those as well. So Patrick, I'm going to just, I'm going to just hand over the, um, the mic uh, to you for a bit, Patrick, just so you can in introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Patrick Larkin, and I'm the principal of Burlington High School in Bur Burlington, Massachusetts. And again, uh, 
I just want to say that the whole connected principles thing, of course, was George's idea. We have to start out with that. But uh, he called me in August and said he had this idea for a blog, and I don't think either one of us realized what it would become. And it's just amazing to me because uh, it's my number one resource for information and connecting. And I would almost put the learning first because it's like I'm learning so much from uh, all the other people on that site and all the great people that get into the CP Chat hashtag and then you know, sharing it with others and really it helps me try to model for my staff and hopefully anybody else that's watching um, virtually from somewhere else about the connections that we can all make. And I think it's interesting, we all struggle, the people that have been involved with social media as to why there aren't more of our colleagues getting involved. And I think the mindset of educators pretty much, one of the big reasons is educators are modest people. And like we didn't get into this to be famous, to be, uh, you know, have ourselves out there. But I think those of us that are trying to share so much, we're not saying that our ideas are better than anyone else's. We're just saying that we think this could be useful to you. And also when we throw out our ideas, like especially, again, I want to, George and I collaborate on a lot of things and I'll talk to him and, you know, I'll give him a little bit of something we're trying to do in my school and he'll, you know, come back to me and add on to that and make it that much more useful and successful. So I think that that's what it's about. The sharing is not because I think this is the best idea out there and you should do it in your school. It's really about me putting it out there as a, as a draft, a work in progress. And I get so much feedback from all the great people out there, the educators that are connected. It's not just about connected principles, as, as George said. I get so much feedback from the great connected educators out there that um, it, it just makes my job that much easier. And it's really, I've said it before, and I know the people here, hopefully, who have been involved in this, um, it's the best learning that I've ever had. No formal classroom or course or workshop has ever done what uh, the social media connections, the connected principles have done for me. So again, thanks to George for uh, creating this venue for all of us to share, and I look forward to you know, talking a little bit later as we get through our slide presentation. Thanks, Patrick. Um, Patrick gives me way too much credit for this, um, and it's really, what's really cool is that I did come up with the idea, and I built a website, and literally it took about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, and that was it, and then basically it's just kind of, it's through the contributions of everybody, which is, which makes it a powerful, uh, powerful tool that we use. Uh, I just want to kind of preface this so um, a little bit so that you know what I'm about as a, as a school principal. For me, it's really essential that the most important thing, and I say this over and over again, is that the relationships in our building are what the foundation of our school is made upon, and that is essential to what we do every day. And that doesn't matter if you're in Canada where standardized testing is not as important as it is in the States. If you connect with your kids, if you connect with your staff and you empower them, they're going to do better whatever your goals may be. And I think uh, what that is kind of the fundamental. Now my background of what I used to do was I was a tech integration coordinator. So I actually had no aspiration of being an administrator. Um, I just kind of fell into it. And I was kind of worked as this resource for people so that they can, you know, learn to use technology and, and connect, um, do different projects with their kids. But the way we use technology now is way different than I ever worked with my staff. And I think it's way more powerful because it's not about the technology, it's about learning and it's about connecting and building those relationships with people. And that's what's really essential. So I saw a great opportunity in Connected Principles. And so this is from Charlene Lee's book, Open Leadership, which says, being open should not be a mantra or a philosophy, but a considered rigorous approach to strategy and leadership that yields real results. So I believe that when, when we share what we're doing and we do these things, we're not, only, we're not only benefiting each other, but we really benefit our own buildings because um, everyone knows exactly where we're coming from because, because we're sharing it openly and we're putting it into you know, blog posts. And all of the people that are in Connected Principles also have their own blog and they just share kind of their best of stuff and uh, that applies to everybody. So, some of the goals for today of what we're going to try to do is we're going to discuss the why of Connected Principles, which is so essential. Every administrator, if they don't know this, they should know this, that any time you do something with your staff, they're always going to wonder, why are we doing this? So it's essential that we know that before we move forward. If it's just cool or it's the, it's, um, it seems like the fad that's 
accepting, that's not a good enough reason. How is this going to be beneficial to practice? How is this going to be beneficial to our kids? How is this going to be beneficial to educators? So we really want to kind of stress why we started this. Um, we're going to discuss the impact that this type of movement can have in education. So even though this is a, a movement with administrators around the world, it's something that can be done. It could be done with music teachers, phys ed teachers, whatever. It's, it's that power of bringing people together and sharing. It could be done with, um, I often talk about a Chris Anderson TED Talk, that he shows how video has really connected dancing and has really made sure that it evolved because it's so easy to access this information and, um, and, to, uh, and to learn these moves. And it's the same thing. Well, we're all, all the people that are part of Connected Principles and contribute are very passionate about what they do. And so we bring those passions together. And so that's kind of the, the big moral that I want people to get out of this today is that anyone can kind of bring these people together. You just kind of have to have a plan. And then moving forward, what are we doing as administrators or what are we doing within this group of Connected Principles so that we aren't only connecting with people that are you know, around the world, but more importantly, we're connecting with people in our own buildings. And we're starting to see that that's happening right now. So one of the things that I, I talked about earlier is that one of the key focuses that we have all the time is relationships. That, um, you know, Patrick and I, which is really interesting, we knew each other and knew of each other before because we tweeted and, uh, you know, would message each other little things here and there. But Patrick has become one of my best friends in this whole process because we have talked and connected and, and I had a good talk with him uh, preparing for this last night that I think it was 1 Eastern his time, 11 o'clock my time because we, we tend to talk and I think that um, when you have those strong relationships with your kids, with people in the building, that um, that's something that's really powerful. Now one of the things that people always do and they always argue about social media is that it is something that the kids are connected to the computer, they don't know how to connect. And to me, that's, that's, that's not true at all. Actually, what I found is that it really enhances some of the relationships that we have. And when Patrick and I finally met in, um, in, in uh, Philadelphia, even though we knew each other for probably at least half a year, we, uh, we got along like we were friends forever. And if it wasn't for that tool of social media, we wouldn't have that strong relationship. And I know people all through this process, and it's just become very powerful to connect. And through Twitter and through blogging sites, we get to know these people on a different um, medium. So the administrators that say it's, a, it's an invaluable tool, I think that they probably don't know what they don't know. And they need to get out there and, and try this stuff and see how this actually will increase the relationship factor in your school. So, when we were building this, one of the key things that um, we wanted to use was, the guiding, was these guiding principles. Because when you're collecting a bunch of people to write and share and, and you're working together, it's essential, that, um, it's essential that we ensure people are on the same page. So I wouldn't want someone writing on the Connected Principles blog that they believe that it should be a dictatorship in schools and basically it's top-down because top-down uh, doesn't work. Top-down is not the way that we want to do things. So we decided as a group, I kind of drafted a document and then with the people that were at Connected Principles at that time, uh, we, we built these guiding principles. And I'm only showing you the first one, but this should be something that's in every school in my opinion is that the decisions we make meet the needs of children we serve, and then all other elements of decision-making process are secondary to this objective. The students we serve are our greatest resource in schools. And what we need to try to do is to ensure that we are taking care of our kids, we're looking out for them, and um, you know, testing is important in some places, but our kids are most important in all places, and we need to continue to show that. Um, we, I know we have financial constraints and all of those things, but we continuously have to look at what are we doing that best serves kids. And that's, that was one of the 10 guiding principles here. And you can look at that on that site, and I think probably someone has shared it in the Illuminate room already. But we came together and we did this. Now, the idea how it started was basically 
Um, kind of just an interesting story. I was riding one night and um, was probably about 25 minutes from my house and kind of just thought of this idea like, man, it'd be cool if we kind of brought all of our blogging together and shared in one place because some people preferred Patrick's and they would only go there. Some people prefer mine. Some people prefer David Truss's, which is totally fine. But I thought, why can't we start building people together, getting people together? And what I also noticed at that time, and, and Lorna kind of discussed it, is that um, Patrick, you know, probably was one of the first principals that was, you know, blogging and tweeting and kind of got into this. And what I noticed when I first started Twitter, and I've only been on for, you know, about a year and a half. I haven't really, um, I haven't been, like, I'm not someone that's been uh, one of the old guards and been there the whole time. But what I found was that administrators, to be honest with you, were getting absolutely bashed on Twitter all of the time. And I would often step in and say things like, not all administrators think like that, or yeah, there are some administrators that can work a computer and understand that, right? So um, I wanted to kind of help and so bring these people together and share that there was a lot of people and it was just that you might have only connected to one or two. I wanted to make it so that you can see that there is a whole bunch of administrators that wanted to work with educators. So to, to kind of do that, I, I really believe in this is that if I want my staff to come together and I want my students to use this technology, um, what, what I need to do is I need to be able to go out and do this on my own. So I actually built my own blog, I built a Connected Principles site because I wanted to have an understanding of how this could impact my building. And so it was really essential that I went out and made that and went out and did that. And what it's done for my own building is that I've been able to help connect my own stuff with people um, within the building, but outside the building as well. So grade three, our grade three teacher often connects. She's on Twitter. She does a lot of work there too. Um, Sean Ram is a person. And Sean, Sean Ram is a, a really interesting uh, case because he works in a building with two teachers that's about a half hour out of town, and that's it. There's only two. There's him and another person and 12 kids. And so every few years, we, he often feels um, isolated, or people in that building, we move them because they're so isolated. And this year, when we approached him about it, it was time to move, he, he actually flat out refused because, because of his connections that he's made throughout Twitter and blogging and all that stuff. He doesn't, feel, he doesn't feel isolated at all. He feels that he's connected. And so I think a lot through my own leadership and my own testing and experimenting, I was able to share that with my own staff. And um, I think that administrators that say, mm, this isn't good, they need to get out there and do these things and kind of follow that, that path. So <clears throat> it kind of started, the first, one of the first posts, I think it was like one of the first one or two, was um, started with this open letter to administrators. And this was posted on my own blog, but I actually, this was kind of the, one of the things when I started Connected Principles, <coughs> excuse me, that um, I really thought we need to, if we are moving forward and we are trying to mirror what is happening in society and what's going on and while the world is changing, our school is staying the same, we need to put ourselves out there and we need to learn to connect. So I wrote this, I wrote this, um, this post and it was basically to say to people, we need you to do this. We need you to connect, and um, we need you to learn from others because it's not about the principal. It's about it's about your school. And I honestly really believe this this um, point, and you'll kind of get it. You'll kind of get my maybe a little sarcastic tone. Is that a principal doesn't have to want to be great at all. That's the, you don't have to want to be great. And like Patrick said, educators are very humble people. And so, in my in my opinion, I want to be great. Uh, that's something that I really want to do. But that being said, greatness of a principal comes from the result of greatness in the people that are in the building. So if you're not able to if you're not able to have your people be great in your building. You're not a great principal. You're not a good principal, in my opinion. It's all about empowering the people around you, and through that empowering, you're kind of by default becoming great as a principal. So people that don't want their um, 
their staff to do really well or, or really don't care shouldn't be in that position where they influence so many people. And that was one of the things that I loved about becoming a principal was that I'd be able to impact um, a lot of different people. It was not about me having being the boss. It was about me, you know, filtering and sharing some of the things that I do with a bunch of people as opposed to that class. So we need as principals to inspire greatness. And that is that was kind of really reflected in this is that through this medium, we can really connect and bring some awesome ideas to our school that do some big things. So what we really wanted to do was, through this process, was we have to share. And that's my, uh, that's my little nephew, and I get to see him this week. Lex, he's, uh, he posed for all these pet pictures for uh, my brother's uh, and Dean Cheresky's presentation. And we really wanted to focus on this whole notion of sharing. And what is really interesting is that I'm a principal in a K-12 program, and it all starts at kindergarten, which I believe is probably the best, um, the best teaching that happens in most schools is that we teach our kids to share right away. And that's, like, that's one of the biggest things that kids learn in kindergarten. We know that. So why in schools do we, are we so reluctant to do what we tell our five-year-olds to do? So it was this point that we needed to start sharing and doing these things so that we could really empower the people that are in the building and, um, and to, to kind of connect them. When I started teaching, and that was about 12 years ago, when I came out, one of the cautions that I had was that you better hope your partner is someone who's willing to share their resources because teachers were typically known as people that hoarded their ideas and put a ton of work into things so that um, they didn't want to just give it away for free. So the way that I saw it was I was just blessed to have someone that would openly share. And I kind of, you know, that, that was my mantra from there on, was that I always wanted to share what I was doing because I got into education to help all kids, not just to help 20 kids that were in my class for a year. I wanted to help any kid that I encountered. <laughs> and through the sharing, um, that's when we do some really great things. And it doesn't mean that I take your idea and use it verbatim. I can take your idea and adjust it and shift it to ensure that it works for my, my school or whatever I'm doing. So one of the things that I think is really essential in the process of Connected Principles is that we really trust the people that are part of it. And so I. I think uh, I saw someone recently, I think it was uh, Lisa Nielsen, the, the, the innovative educator. I saw on her Facebook, she was asked to post um, for a blog. And so someone asked her to, but then they wanted to edit it and go through it and do all these things before it actually got out there. And she was very upset about it through her Facebook. And so, and so what's really interesting is about the process of Connected Principles is that all administrators as educators are very busy people. So this is not a profit thing. Like we've been asked for to advertise and I've always been uncomfortable. This is just something we do because we want to help people and we want to kind of connect and learn from each other. So one of the big elements of it is that when, when uh, people uh, join Connected Principles, and it's not a, an elitist club, it's basically if you're a principal and you agree with the guiding principles, then you can be a part of it. It's that easy. And so um, one of the things that uh, we do is that I just sign them up, give them like full rights over the site, and they just go on and post and they just share their information. And so we always have the guiding principles to make sure that people um, follow what they're doing. But that's part of what's interesting about that is that's what we need to do in our schools is that we need to we hire these people or we work with these educators and so often many bosses micromanage everything that we do and it's a gigantic waste of time and it doesn't empower people at all to do anything great because they feel they're they're really not allowed to do anything um, unless it's kind of checked off before and it is some take some risk now uh, what I notice is that sometimes people will mess up on how they put a picture, they might do some spelling, but I know as a group, if any of us see it, we go out and we help each other. And that's kind of what we should be doing in schools. 
So that element of trust is that once you're a part, you're a part and you're just as equal as myself who started the site or Patrick who posts this much. And that's what we really need to exemplify in our schools. And I think that's, uh, that's something that we've all really kind of has been uh, um, empowered through this process as well. So what I kind of suggested before is that I really want to talk about why we do this and what was essential. And I kind of touched upon this earlier is that um, one, of the, one of the really things, the big things that I want to do first of all was to kind of connect admin to each other so that we can um, share our learning, we can, we can uh, come up with these great ideas. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of these ideas that have caught on not only within the Connected Principles group but all over and I'll, I'll show you those later. Um, but one of the other things that we really wanted to do was we really wanted to focus that even though we are a group of people that you know um, were you know had very similar things going on in our schools, that we really wanted to we really wanted to empower show that we were all on the same team with educators. That in my school division or in my province, we're all in the same union, but that's not the norm for many. Is that we're separated by unions. But if you're in that building, everyone contributes, everyone is on the same team. That goes for the custodian to the principal. That's everybody. We're all there for kids, so we need to be all on the same page. I always have this thing when we deal with parents that are upset, and the first thing I always say about is that I want to make it clear you and I are on the same page because we want the same goal. What is best for your kid, right? And so once we start doing that, there's no reason we need to go against each other because we're all there for the same reason. So we wanted to be open with this learning to show that even though we are coming together, we really wanted to uh, have this have this place where we showed how much we supported our teachers and how much we cared about them that they do these great things. It wasn't about you know how do we do budgets, right? That's just a, a fragment of our job. It's how do we empower the people in our building. So we needed to be really open in this learning, and that was part of that why. Uh, of what we are trying to do. Now, Patrick is going to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we've done to ensure that we're not only connecting in this space, but connecting in others to bring more administrators together. So I'll hand over the mic to you, Patrick. Thanks, George. Um, I think that why question is so huge. And again, um, going back to the how briefly, we decided that, and I ask this in my community, and I know George does as well, is like, where do you want our information? Um, if parents are on Facebook and they want to have information on Facebook, then we'll have a Facebook page. I mean, there's no reason in the year 2011 that we can't communicate with every stakeholder um, however they want to be communicated with. You know, we have reverse 911 phone systems, we have Facebook pages, we have blogs, we have Twitter accounts. For people that don't have connections at home, of course, we can do traditional mailings. But basically, we just need people need to let us know how we want to communicate. But I just, I just want to, I just think the why can't be deep enough. And um, I, I mentioned it earlier about how educators are modest people. And George alluded to the fact why he became a principal was because you know he wanted to be a leader. He made that decision. And I think we all make the decision when we decide we're going to work with students. I think we take on the we are leaders, whether it's in our classroom. So with that mindset and moving to administration and trying to explain to people, um, I know teachers are modest people, educators are modest people, but I do think um, we have a moral obligation to share things. If we know we're doing things in our classroom that are working for kids, now we have the capacity because of the world we live in and the connections we have with technology that we can share that with others outside of our room, hopefully in our own buildings, but outside of our own school as well. And you can impact students all over the world if you have ideas. And not only that, you'll get the, the flow back, which I mentioned earlier, from the great educators that are out there that are going to help you make what you're doing that's working well even better. Um, another thing going on the why is uh, Will Richardson made this comment at a presentation that I was at that he was speaking at. is basically about um, the whole Facebook thing, and I think it has implications like for all social media tools, but do you want to start the Facebook page for your school or do you want some parent or some student to go out and start one that might not be positive? If, if Facebook's out there and it's a resource to put out messages about your school, don't you want to go out there and start the official whatever your name is school Facebook site first and put all kinds of useful information out there? 
So in the bigger context, we're talking about branding, so connected principles, we're branding ourselves um, everywhere where we can reach people that are interested, and we need to do the same thing in our schools. We need to brand ourselves, um, not wait for the media to have some one negative thing happen and have that be what people know about your schools. We have the capacity to put out daily positive information about the great things that we know are going on with our kids and our classrooms, and it also allows people outside in your community, outside of your community, they can get a handle on what your school is all about without ever even visiting your school. You can start to, start to get a sense for what the culture of a school is solely through social media if you're not physically close to a school or you don't have the option of getting inside of a particular school on a regular basis. So um, again, we're trying to model that with, we communicate um, with different tools. We're trying to model that of what you can do. And the other thing I, I really want to mention is, is kind of a personal thing is it's lonely to be an administrator sometimes before I made all these connections. And I think it can be lonely to be a classroom teacher as well, depending on what the culture of your school is. I, the traditional uh, school, in my mind, is like, you know, people are independent contractors, don't really have a lot of connection with others. And we've been able to break this down. So as an administrator, um, like I had certain things I wanted to do in my school. I wanted to infuse more technology. I wanted to start to think about becoming a school that had a, a device in the hands of every child. And in Massachusetts, that's not something that's prevalent. So I had the chance, um, you know, they ask, they ask you when you're a little kid, who do you want to be like when you grow up? I think as an administrator, I, I, I ask, like, who, what school do I want to be like? Like, what do I see out there that I think is really working well for students? Um, who do I want to emulate? Who do I want to model myself after? Um, like I can raise the bar in my school by not just looking at the school in the next town over or all the schools in my state. I can look at what schools are doing all over the world and take some of the best practices back and try to employ them in my school. And so that's basically what's happened for Burlington High School is we've gone from a school that, you know, we had some technology to now next year we're going to be putting 1,100 iPads in the hands of our students. And the reason that has happened is all because of social media. It's because I got on Twitter, I got a Twitter account, um, and I started connecting with a gentleman named Darren Durflinger in Iowa who invited me and one of my teachers to a one-to-one -one conference out in Iowa put on by Scott McLeod in Castle. And we decided we were going to be a one-to-one -one school. And from there, again, anything I want to know about one-to-one, -one, I can learn through uh, getting on Twitter and um, guys like Rich Kiker and uh, the one-to-one -one hashtag. And if we can show other administrators whatever you want to do in your school, it's not a technology conversation. It's about adding resources. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to learn more about RTI? There's educators on Twitter that are excellent. They're experts on RTI. And we're just trying to show them how easy it is. Um, I think, again, the traditional administrator struggles to find connections of interest for things that they want to do in their school. And um, with social networking, all the walls are broken down for us. So the other thing I think we have to realize in our schools, and, um, and George also alluded to this, and he wrote a great post, um, which I, I gave a link to earlier, talking about how we are all teachers. We are, I say we are all educators, um, which is, again, just semantics. But I think we have to be very careful because the environment outside of our schools um, can be quite political sometimes, and they want to put the us versus them again. And I hate when people, like George said, when people talk about school leaders being such and such or administrators being such and such. Um, I think that just breaks everything down for us. So in schools, I think wherever you are as an educator, you need to realize, like look at the statistics. Administrators are going to come and go. Um, we have the ability, if, if you have the right type of leadership, hopefully, in your building, and if you don't, you need to ask for it, you need to push for it. The teachers that are going to be there, teachers are there for the long haul. If you have a positive community and a positive school and you have the resources that you need, teachers don't move around that much. Administrators come and go. So you need to make sure that the leadership style is one that is actually shared, as George described earlier, because if you're just waiting for the next principal to come in the door and start doing the things that you want to do. I mean, that's not the way we want our kids to be. Um, I think we need to model that type of leadership as well as the educators in the building. Like, what do we want for ourselves? We have to go out there and, and kind of push for it a little bit and, uh, and question and not be the type of educators that just uh, sit in and wait for somebody to bring them information. So 
again, social media, the Connected Principles chat, um, we are here for everyone. We're not, that's one thing we, we try to make clear every time we have an opportunity to talk, is that we're here for all educators, and that's what the session at Educon said that George and I had the opportunity, which was a thrill, uh, the first time we met physically to present at Educon together, is we are all about all stakeholders. There was a great, um, uh, there was a parent in our session from, I think she was from Chicago, George, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Shugana. Um, it was great to have her in there. It was great to have other administrators in there. It was great to have teachers. The thing that I'm disappointed by is if the discussion is just administrators among administrators. I, I want to have teachers in the room. Personally, no disrespect, I, I learn a lot more from classroom teachers that are dealing with the daily struggles of um, integrating technology, doing things in their classroom engaging students is basically the bottom line. I learn a lot more from people that are in the classroom every day um, when I get a chance to go in and talk to them. So we want to just make sure that we're inclusive and that we want to try to change schools, not just in our own towns, but we want to change schools globally. And that's kind of our, that's, that's the impact we're looking for. So I could listen to George all day, so I'm going to turn the mic back to him and hopefully we'll get a chance to answer some questions. And I just want to, again, thank the people from Classroom 2.0 about giving us the opportunity to talk about Connected Principles because um, the other thing I want to mention, whoever you are out there, um, we will talk to your schools, we will talk to your administrators. Please just contact us through Twitter or through uh, email or George is going to put the contact stuff up at the end and we promise you we will, we will return your messages and we want to connect and help you move forward in your schools the way that we're seeing movement in ours. Okay, so what we want to talk about like one of the big things I said with all when that first email to all the people with connected principles is that I don't want to hear about theory I want to hear about what is happening. We need to start talking more about what is actually happening so we um, we improve um, education and we can say this does work, not in theory, but this does work. So through this connecting, what's happened is that um, we made some really cool connections. And what is um, Patrick and I, who didn't even know each other in the 2009-2010 year, now we had his kids teaching my kids about um, East Indian culture. And so we, we made these connections and we're starting to connect with each other's schools and it's impacting our kids because we understand how to do this and we've, we've, uh, we've done this with our educators and all the way down to our students. So it's been really cool because our kids are starting to connect with each other and, and teach each other. And it wasn't like a forced connection. Our students were actually learning about India and Patrick saw that and he wanted to, um, he said, hey, I, we got these students in my building. Um, and they're from they have like a Indian culture, and we want to, and we want to connect with each other, or we should we should connect them. And what was really cool is that they didn't even learn about only learn about cultures, but they learned about um, the United States and Canada. And what was cool about this whole process was Patrick was there with his students, but we had empowered our teachers that you know we had teachers that had never done any of this stuff now doing this on their own. I had to be at a meeting at that time and they were so comfortable I didn't need to be there to facilitate it. They did it on their own. And so some of the impacts that we're having, I'm going to show you a couple examples, is that uh, David Trust, who I think is still in the room, um, he often misses illuminates because he mixes up the, the time zones, but that's okay. He's obviously a great principal. He never misses the school. He kind of did this thing called no office day. And no office day was to really encourage administrators to, to not sit in their office and go be with their kids and their teachers for a whole day. Now, one of my big beliefs is that we, we need to really ensure that we are, in, we are in classrooms all the time, but Dave really wanted to push that for those administrators that maybe don't, <laughs> don't get that. I just see my mom and dad have joined the session are really excited. Uh, it's not really true with my brother, so they're going to be, uh, don't believe anything from mom and dad girls. Um, so that no office day was really, really huge to many people because it encouraged administrators. And if you Google it, the first thing you'll find, um, no office day, you'll find David Truss's post on Connected Principles. But then you'll see a bunch of other people, principals that have blogged about it to really enforce what's happened or to, to do the same thing in their schools. Shared learning uh, with Dan Pink's 
Uh, Carl Fish talked about the fish flip re reverse instruction, and Jonathan Martin, who's an administrator in Arizona, he uh, he's actually at a charter school, which is you know we have this. I, I, we don't really deal with this as much in Canada, but I know there's this big you know charter schools, public schools, etc. We just say good teaching is good teaching, and whatever we can bring in. So Jonathan Martin, who writes uh, very eloquent posts, very detailed talks about this reverse instruction and many people, even though this was an idea shared by uh, Carl Fish and uh, probably people before and who knows where it came from, when we had it through this forum, many people started implementing that into their classroom and making it happen. And then we had this, uh, this Inspiration Delivers, who was done by Lynn Hilt, talking about you know working with staff so that they're leading their own development, which Chris Wedger talked about as his FedEx time where people have kind of just their own time to do what they needed. And what I've started to see is that even though we're doing this for educators and teachers in our building, we're really starting to see this with our kids where they're giving them time just to explore, go outside of the curriculum and just to explore and be innovative and, and do these, these, these types of things. So we see these ideas kind of go out and be shared amongst and men. And what's really cool about, if you look back at, at these ideas, um, and this is the big hang-up that many admin have. No office day, uh, fish flip, inspiration delivers, FedEx time. None of those are about technology. They're all about effective learning practices. And that really needs to be shown is that we just have this very powerful way to connect and share these ideas that impact learning, not impact technology use. Technology um, is just the tool that we use. Now, my brother's in the room and he all say that, well, it is a powerful tool and I totally agree, but we really need to focus on learning. We, we're all about learning in this. So now that we've done this and we've connected to a lot of people that to share these ideas, it's really essential that we bring this back to the people that aren't connected, that don't use blogs or don't use Twitter. So what's essential for me and many others is that we move forward and start to kind of bring this message of connecting to other people. So I wrote this post called Start Global, Build Local. And it was talked talk about how I first kind of went out and connected with a bunch of administrators all over the world. But now what I'm starting to do is to connect with administrators um, in my own school division and show them the power of this and how this can really change a lot of practices. And so we're starting to bring this message back to back to our schools. And then, um, so we're starting, I know that one of uh, a principal who is out about an hour out of Edmonton, which is a, a large city, he, uh, He's a very, he has a lot of isolation out there with the staff, and he's starting to see like this is going to be beneficial to what we're doing. We can start doing these innovative things even though we only have a staff of 10 to 15 people. So we need to start connecting with people in our area. And what I'm seeing is that most of our people that are with Connected Principles have found this value and are starting to talk. Like I know Patrick works a lot with administrators in the Boss or the Massachusetts area. Lynn, uh, Lynn Hilt has done a lot of stuff in her area, Jonathan Martin, so that we're showing, you know what, we need to get people that aren't connected, connected, so we're doing these things. And recently I actually did a session called uh, The Network's Educational Leader, and it was kind of based on this idea that administrators need to connect, and I was kind of going to be their guide for, for a while so I could help them build their network. Too often we go into these sessions where they say Twitter's awesome, Twitter's great, we have a bunch of people that sign up, and then they don't do anything. And I think I was lucky enough to have my brother, um, who is a professor of educational technology, kind of guide me through this so I could ask questions. And so what I wanted to do was be a mentor for these people that did it. Now, I would, I would be the first one to tell you that there were several people that did it, were excited, and then didn't follow up on the sessions. But there are some people that will follow up, and more importantly, they're administrators, so if they understand it and they get it, they're going to really open a lot of doors to that greatness for people in, in this area. So, so hopefully it's kind of inspiring, it's kind of filtering and, and shifting this mindset that we, we need to learn from each other because we're, we're doing this. Now, as I talked about earlier, this isn't about 
um, making money or anything like uh, connected principles. There's no advertisements. There's nothing. In fact, it actually cost me money to do this, um, to open the site, but I find it so valuable. So why would we do this? Why is it important? And to me, this is the big thing, is that everyone's a star and deserves the right to twinkle. I love that little thing. Um, it is about empowering the people in your building. And so through this, I don't know if I'm going to be in your building in a couple of years or I'm going to be you know, in the States, wherever. All I know is, is that we need to really give people the opportunity to find people that they're passionate or passionate about the same things, connect and share their learning. And that's what we have in Connected Principles. And if we can model that, we can understand the student that you know, is really into drama and we can help them connect with groups that are doing this as opposed to saying, well, you like drama but our school is only about math and language arts. We need to start doing this so we give our kids the opportunity to find their groups where they're passionate. My brother told me a story about uh, a student that talked about social media with um, a bunch of educators at a conference and it really stuck out with me. And one of the things that his, his dad said to my brother was that my kid was very shy, never talked, never did anything. But once he found this, he found his voice and he started to connect. And I know I could, all of us could probably think about when we were in school, those kids that were just a little bit off or did something because we didn't understand. And now they have that opportunity to go and share those passions. It wasn't that they were off, it's just that they never really connected with us, but there was other people out there where they went to university or whatever, and you saw them really connect. We can't wait till university. We can't wait till after high school. We need to be able to, to do this now for them so that they can connect and learn these things. And so what we built here is ultimately this learning community. And this learning community is so important because we need to model this for our, our, our staff is that it's not about, you know, when I look at my teacher's blogs and see our student blogs, I can see what they're doing after hours, when I have time, you know, um, through like this, through this technology and be a part of what they're learning. So it's not just the classroom teacher stands in, the kids show up and then they leave and learning is done. We want to build this where parents can kind of come in, the parent that works all day, um, the mom that, that's a lawyer and can't be, you know, volunteer in the classroom they can impact this learning. So the nice thing about Connected Principles is that I can look at it when I have time, when I'm doing this, so I can learn at a time as a, um, essential with me with, these, with the other administrators. And we need to start building our schools to look a lot more like this where our kids, our educators can do this on time that is available for them. Yes, they're still going to go to school and yes, those things happen, but if a kid is really inspired and wants to learn stuff, why should they not be able to do it during school or after hours? And we need to be the models and the guides for our kids to do this. And that's essentially what Connected Principles has done and has built this community. And I'm hoping that what we can do is build these communities um, within our schools. And you don't have to be a bunch of administrators. You just have to be a bunch of people with a shared passion. We just happen to be administrators with a shared passion of you know, being educational leaders. So if you, uh, I want to make sure that we have time for questions, and I know um, I've shared uh, resources here, and you can look at any of this stuff. Um, so any of these ar articles, I'd love for you to share with your administrators or people in your building. But what I want to make sure is that if you have any questions, um, we really want to be able to uh, connect after this session and do this. So obviously the website's on the bottom, but you can connect to us through Twitter, you can connect to us through um, our email, websites, whatever. So if there's any questions, I would love to, uh, to take them right now, and myself or Patrick can help them. So if you want, you can just put your hand up, and I'm sure they'll pass you over so that you can answer any questions you have. Great. One of the questions I saw was, um, how do you contribute to the Connected Principal blog? Um, all you have to do, Kim, is basically, if you're interested in doing it, you just have to contact me. And um, all I say is um, you have to um, follow the guiding principles so that it's not a personal thing. It's about um, what what we write about and what we stand for. But um, 
But basically, you have to email me and, and be able to write, and that's it. And you have to be a, a principal or in, in school administration. Okay. And do you consider blogging and, or do you combine blogging and face-to-face -face meetings with your staff? Oh, yeah, definitely, Kim. We, uh, we uh, all, in my own school, our entire staff has, um, every single teacher has a blog or writes on a blog, and it's used as a way to communicate with parents. Um, I have our own blog at, uh, for the school that's kind of a hub, and then it's a WordPress multi-user site. And so it's a way for me to connect with my staff, share, but it's also an opportunity for uh, our kids to learn. We used to have a website that just kind of went one way. So like if we ask a question, we couldn't get the answer back. Um, but we just need to, um, my staff does that, but I connect with them. I'm not the only person that does technology in our building. It's also people that um, I try to work with others so that um, we build a system so it's not dependent upon me. So I have about six or seven who know how to run the whole system so that it will go even if I leave or gone, they know how to troubleshoot. Um, Paula asked the question, how do you get each teacher to block? Well, what I try to do, Paula, was um, Basically, I model first, right? Like it's it's a lot easier to ask your teachers to blog um, when you're doing it yourself. And so when they say I'm too busy, and you're saying, well, I'm busy too, but I'm finding time because it's really important. Um, and basically, what I did was the the person that wasn't comfortable comfortable for it with it, um, like I try to take out every step. So I actually built every blog for my teachers at first. And so we, we kind of had this thing where we wanted our kids to have these blog portfolios. But it was the understanding that how can we expect our kids to have this if we don't have an understanding? So our, our, teach, our, teachers, um, our teachers basically have this, and, um, and they did it. And then so we, like I, I have tutorials, so if a teacher asks a question about how to do this, they'll email me. I actually um, video it. I do it on what's called screener, and then I post it so that everyone gets the answer so that the teacher that's reluctant to ask or uncomfortable um, can do this. But I also have, um, but it's also a resource for our kids too. And what's really cool is that I often do sessions for staff or for educators outside of my own building, but I, I don't do anything unless it's, um, it's um, something I can bring back to my school. So if you look at that bit.ly, that it's WP, it actually shows you how to do a WordPress blog, and it goes step by step in its videos. But it's, we also use it with our kids now, so I, I just made it. Len asked the question, what was the resource you used? For the blogging, we used uh, what's called WordPress multi-user, which is, which is fantastic, and you can have kids have their own space, and it's, it's really, really cool. Oh. Uh, screener, it's called Screener once. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the show, but we invite everybody to stay on and continue asking questions. I have some more on the list that I will ask of Patrick and George in just a bit. And we wanted to let you know that you can also download the slides by going to File, Save, and then Save the group of slides as a PDF. These are some of our shows that we have planned coming up for you on April 2nd. Collaborize, and that will be another session at this same time. There will also be a K-12 online ECHO webinar, and that's going to be with Cliff Mims, and that's going to be Monday, March the 28th at 6 p.m. Pacific and 9 p.m. Eastern at edtechtalk.com slash studio. And Cliff Mims is going to be the presenter talking with Jose Rodriguez and Susan Van Gelder of the K-12 online or, uh, conference organizer team. And we invite you to join us for that session as well. These are some of the interviews that Steve Hargadon will be hosting on April 7th. He will have Vernon Jean Porter. April 12th, Carl Speak. On April the 14th, he will have Jerry Mintz. And April the 19th, David Schenk. Um, and all, all of those sessions are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. 
And we want to let you know that as soon as you exit the session, the survey link will open in externally in your browser. And we will also type that survey link in the chat if for some reason the survey doesn't open for you. You can just click on that link in the chat and it will automatically open in your browser and it won't exit you from the session. But we would love to get your feedback on today's session as well as future topics and future guests. We go through the survey results and we look through them and we use them to plan future shows. So we do read each and every survey response. And you can also request a professional development certificate in the survey. There's a, a part where you can put your name and your email address and Peggy will get out those certificates to you. Um, you can also email us at live at classroom20.com if for some reason the survey link doesn't open in your browser. And we want to let you know that we also have an iTunes U channel for you to take us with you wherever you go. You can subscribe to the chat log, the MP3 and the MP4, and access the iTunes U channel directly in iTunes at tinyurl.com slash CR20Live iTunes U, all one word, CR20Live iTunes U, and that will open it up the, in your iTunes and you can take us and subscribe to each of those components. And um, we're very grateful that Piggy's helped coordinate that for us. And we want to extend, extend a very special thank you to George and Patrick today, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom20.com and Future of Education. We want to thank each of you for sharing and participating in today's session and asking questions, as well as Illuminate and Learn Central for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And we invite you to continue to ask your questions and typing them in the chat. You can also um, click on the hand with the green up arrow and then we'll give you the mic. And I believe if Jane C is still here, she had a question earlier. But I'm going to go ahead and go through the list. Um, how many teachers are involved with connected principles? Ian asked that question. No teachers contribute. It's just um, it's um, it's only administrators that do it right now. So it's kind of that's the, kind of the only thing that it is. Um, it's obviously educators can read it, but yeah, it's um, it's only administrators that are um, writing for it. And and we also wanted to uh, Paul ask. How, what is the motivation, and how do you get each teacher to blog? Is it a requirement, or are they just motivated and inspired to follow your lead? Uh, for the teacher blogs, is that what you asked? I missed, I missed part of that. Um, for your, your teacher blogs on your campus, and uh, how do you get the, the teachers to, to blog? Are, do you require them? Um, no, actually, I have a um, I have a little saying in my school that just to really make sure that people are comfortable with it, I always say to them, I don't care how far along you are in the path. I just want you on the path. So I don't say you need to um, you need to blog X amount of times a week. I just really um, encourage them. I make sure that the reluctant blogger, when they do blog, I post a comment so they know that I'm always. Um, there for them to help them out, and uh, I know that when they are blogging, and we kind of what we're doing this year, um, uh, the uh, the the thing that we're doing is that we're actually going to go and work with the teachers, and we're, we're going to build like a spectrum of well, the grade six teacher is here, so what do we need to do for the what does the grade five teacher need to do to ensure that we build this kind of continuum, because we wanted to use like some. Similar programs, like we use WordPress, um, WordPress with all of our kids and all of our staff, so that we don't have one teacher using um, uh, WordPress, someone using Blogger, someone using Blogspot, someone using Posturus. We wanted to build capacity, so we use the same goal. So it's actually been helpful because it's it's like we're all doing it together and we all are learning together 
which is part of that learning community. So it's, it's been helpful that you can go across the room for help as opposed to find a tech leader because we're all doing the same thing. Great. Thank you. Um, and Peggy, you have a comment. Yes, I do. And I want to just quickly bring something up that I didn't tell George I was going to do. But many of you participate in the ISTE conferences. And there is an amazing project that was started by Beth Still several years ago. And Beth is in the room. And I told her I wanted to announce this today. And she doesn't have a mic, so I'm going to be her voice. But the ISTE project, and uh, for some reason that isn't coming up correctly in the um, chat, but I will drop that link in here. Um, the ISTE Newbie project, oh, now it's loading, is a project that was designed to support someone who is an outstanding educational leader, but who has never had the opportunity to go to that conference. And it isn't just about them going to the conference, but it's about us getting to meet them in person at the conference. So it's really a, a project that is, is designed for us to all contribute in a very small way that would make a big difference to sending someone to ISTE. And this year, George Gross is the ISTE 11 newbie. So if you go to that link and um, check it out, you can read more about the project and make a small donation. We are so excited to have the opportunity to meet George at is the 11 this year. And you can even purchase swag for the conference. I have my own little keychain tag that says George Kuros is the 11 newbie that I'll be wearing on my um, technology bag when I go there. But I wanted to tell you all about that and to encourage you to check it out. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Peggy. Um, I know that there's been some common conversation about um, the resources that were shared in today's session. Um, if there was a live link, you can always click those, and they will open up externally in your browser, and you don't have to worry about being um, removed from the session. But we also compile the resources and add them to a live binders um, site. And let me, I'm looking. There we go. And we want to share that with you and just briefly let you know that this is what we use to compile our resources. We used to use share tabs um, um, and the Goyam link, but we've started using live binders so that we can compile all of the resources, um, PDFs, and, and resources that are shared um, during the session. We add those in after the session. We also share the resources that our presenters um, sent to us, and those are posted already in the binder. And if you click along the different dates at the top, you can see the topic and the guests, as well as the resources that were shared um, on those different websites, on those different show dates um, from our different topics. And we also want to let you know that if you forget the live binders link, you can also access all of these on, and the recordings on our website on the Archives and Resources page. And if you click um, on the Archives tab, it will take you. It's set up as a blog post. So you can subscribe to the blog post through your RSS feed reader, or you can obtain them through subscribing through iTunes U if you didn't want to go through the blog here. But Regardless, these are both of the ways that we share all of the resources um, that were shared during the session and prior to the session from the presenter. So we wanted to make sure that you had access to all of those things today. And I'm going to go ahead and post back in the um, 
the live miners link here in the chat as well. And if there are any questions that we haven't addressed already, um, please type those in the chat or click on the hand with the green up arrow. And I know there was a bit of conversation about the comments. Um, and I'm assuming that you have the comments moderated and the teacher moderates and monitors those, George? What we do is um, we make sure that we have the comments are moderated on all of our blogs. We really believe that through the blogging, through the through uh, through that medium, that's where we get some of the best learning. So, for example, if I do a journal and I write in it and then I hand it to the teacher, I can only have one person look at a time. Whereas if I do a blog, everyone can look at it, every contribute, and we can all learn from each other, building that learning community. So we have our teachers do that; they blog because you know it is a school, and we don't want anything inappropriate, and um, and we go through that. Now, when the kids get their own blogs, they also will moderate their comments, and so we have it in a system where only our school community can see the blogs until they get to a certain point, and then we open them. So we kind of basically go through steps with our kids. So we don't just say, here's your blog, it's open, anyone can see it. We do like lots of digital citizenship. You have to sign like some forms saying like, hey, I'm going to be responsible and, and all these things and kind of set some expectations up with them and their parents. We also educate the parents as well to make sure that they know what's going on because um, kids, you know, if, if we're monitoring and working with our kids at school and parents are doing their jobs and monitoring stuff that's at home, we have to, uh, then the kids should be okay, right? There are some times where you can get a negative comment, just like you can get a negative comment on um, a blog um, or on the playground. And so we don't shut the playground down. We need to teach kids how to deal with it, what's appropriate, and how to do these things, right? So we do open that. If you, there's no use to have a blog if you're not going to comment. You might as well just have a journal because it's it's just it's just glorified typing in my opinion. To be honest, the, the the commenting is where a lot of the learning happens. It happens for myself. I learn a lot more from the comments than I do writing my own posts. Absolutely, and that's I totally agree about the comments, and I'm um, glad that you allow them and and that the comments are used as part of the instructional process as well as the blog posts. And we'll check on that. I didn't think that the LiveBinders um, required a key that it, and it shouldn't be private. Um, so um, we'll, we'll check on that and let us know if it continues to um, give you that message that you need the key. And it looks like we kind of are winding down. We want to extend a very happy early birthday to Paula. Her birthday is tomorrow. And we want to thank each of you for helping us to achieve a really fantastic milestone today at 100 shows. This is our 100th show. And we're so grateful that you join us each and every week and that we have such fantastic guests and that donate their time as well as ourselves. We just donate our time, a labor of love, paychecks of the heart, um, for this venture that we do each Saturday. And so we're thankful, um, Patrick and George, that you are our special guest on our 100th show. And we're very thankful for each of our attendees that are brand new as well as our faithful regulars. So thank you so much. Um, if there aren't any more questions, then we um, will go ahead and close out the session today. I'm going to move the slide back to their contact information. And we do hope that you will join us next Saturday for um, when we talk about the new collaborative community called We Collaborize. Um, so we'll have the founders and the um, some of the staff from there joining us next Saturday at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. So have a great Saturday, everybody, and a great weekend. Enjoy the and relax, and we will connect with you online. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Saturday. See you next week. Recording stopped.